In economies around the world, inflation is proving to be a bugbear. In the largest economy as well, in the US, inflation has run riot. And to control inflation, the US Fed has stepped up its effort by increasing the policy rates very sharply. As early as yesterday, it increased the rates by 75 basis points and it said that it might have to raise rates by 50 to 75 basis points in July as well. That is pushing bond yields higher in the US and it's causing nervousness in risk assets across the world. What is, if at all, the impact on fixed income assets here in India? How do you understand this global context and does it affect you? To understand this, I have with me Mr. D.P. Singh, who is the Deputy Managing Director and Chief Business Officer at SBI Mutual Fund. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh, for taking the time and uh, congratulations you. on your new designation. Uh, let me start by asking about this latest update by the Fed. In a sense, we were building to this, but the view and the expectation of that 75 basis points changed quite dramatically in that a couple of weeks back as well, they weren't expected to raise rates by 75 basis points. So from the Indian perspective, how does the Indian investor understand this changing scenario globally, this uncertainty and volatility? Yeah, and first of all, thank you very much for having me on the show. And uh, see, as your question, uh, one, the, the US hike, and its effect on Indian market and Indian uh, movements of the interest rates. As far as the uh, Fed is concerned, I think this was always already a writing in the wall that they will increase by 75 basis points. So it was uh, an almost a consensus in the markets because their inflation is almost five times more than their target inflation of 2%. As far as India is concerned, inflation is very high here as well, but this is within. 30 to 40 percent more than the higher side of the target, which is we are talking about 2 to 6 percent, and if we are having 8 percent, so 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 that that's that's uh, uh, almost uh, see, uh, 25 30 percent more than the target, but there it is 5 percent, so 5 5 times sorry, so so that they have to take drastic action. It was writing on the wall, and uh, uh, it was factored in the rates also already. And the same was the case in India when uh, RBI increased the uh, uh, rates by 50 basis points across the board. Uh, there also, I mean, the yields have not uh, gone up very, very high. Now, today also, uh, the 10-year yields is at the rate of 7.61%, which was at 7.5152. So, 10 basis point increase in the yields uh, in response to the 50 basis point hike in the, in the, uh, the policy rates. So that's we have to look at, and we also have to be ready for another hike of, say, at least 50 basis points in the month of July. That, that may happen. And uh, see, market uh, again will factor it in well before the time. Okay. But I look at the 10 year treasury rate, uh, the bond yield there, and it's at 3.4, more than 3.4% at this point. And if yeah. you look at the dot plot that was discussed, uh, there is an expectation that that policy rate can hit 3.4% by the end of this year. It can move to 3.8% in the next year. It can then move back to 3.4%. So we're looking at a considerable increase even from this point, Mr. Singh, in the policy rate. And one can therefore assume that the bond yield there will also move up very substantially. From, the perspective, of, from the perspective of capital flows then, we're already seeing the impact in the equity markets here in India. Will that continue? Will there be a sizable drain that continues from the Indian uh, Indian markets then? See, it's, it's absolutely temporary, which, which we have seen in uh, outlook. And uh, we were recently attending one uh, separate economic investment forum. And see, today, the three years ago or five years, four years ago, nobody was talking about India being a very, very small economy. And today, last week, when we attended that uh, conference, in each and every delegation, India was being talked about. So, India is a natural destination for the uh, foreigners to put in money. As on date, they are going to break this. Is because whenever they have redemption, whenever people they are going to put money in, 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 a, in a, any other uh, market, because our market 
has performed much better than other markets. Uh, we, we, till recently, till last week, we were down only by 15%. So of course, we, today we can say we are down by 20%. Whereas the other economies have gone down by 30%. So whenever they have redemption, they will definitely try to book profit where they are still sitting on gains. So that was the reason that we are getting money. I am not worried. I see this is an opportunity for putting more money who are having surplus uh, in India and uh, the people who are sitting outside and uh, looking for putting in money. I, I personally feel, I am fully convinced that, that we will see the reversal very soon. Much earlier than uh, we be generally expect. Thing. I want to also talk about the Indian context, Mr. Singh, and you did refer to it just a bit earlier when you were talking about the Fed. Central banks, of course, across the world are contending with high inflation, um, and yeah. the RBI has also raised rates by 50 basis points, and this is uh, now on the back of that 40 basis point hike that was off cycle, yeah. so 90 basis points in the span of just a couple of months. As you were pointing out, on the long end, there hasn't been much of a change on the tenure. So there was some amount of that rate increase that was baked in already. But before we get into the yield curve and what the mean, meaning is for fixed income investments, I want to get your sense on where things stand because the RBI clearly is doing a bit of a balancing act. It's controlling inflation or trying to control inflation. At the same time, it's trying to support growth. We're at a time where it's absolutely crucial for that to take place. How do you see yeah. this dynamic panning out? See, I am optimistic from two points of view. See, as far as first, I will talk about the rates. I can foresee that the rates which are there today, the policy rates, can with the next three to six months can reach as a six percent. Okay, six percent it will be good. Be six percent, but that is the rate at which our yields may move to around eight, eight and a half percent. Eight, eight to two five percent. Percent, which is very, very high, of course. But but at the same time, from investors' point of view, there are two set of investors. One who are already invested in the long duration, and second is those investors who are going to put money now. So how do they navigate? For them, they, they, they both have, have to have different strategies. First, the people who are already there for last two, three years, and they, they, they have a horizon of three to four years, the things will definitely balance out over the you need to dedicate this point of time. And all those who are going to put in money now, there can be two strategies for the investors. One is, if they can wait for a while, they can put in money in the shorter duration funds, which are where the mark to market cost will be very, very minimum. And there is a possibility of getting a return of around five and a half, six, six and a half percent kind of returns. So that is, that is very much possible and visible. That, that can be done. Second is, if you want to lock in at these yields, then you have to go, go to the roll down strategy, which is a lot of funds are there, a lot of index funds are going to be in the market, you can be part of it. Or, or you can wait for the timing, park money in the short duration fund, and once the things settle down a bit, maybe another three to six months, then you can put it in the long duration fund. Then you'll have an opportunity for some, uh, not only the yields, but of capital gains as well. Uh, I, I want to talk about that uh, rule down strategy as well, just a bit. Or you know, uh, they talk about structuring your investments over a period of time so that you have staggered returns over a period of time, right? And you're not facing yeah. that volatility. Uh, yes. Do you think, uh, Mr. Singh, that now more than ever, it is important to educate the investor of the potential for capital loss if you hold money in uh, a longer term? funds, uh, they are more susceptible to capital loss if they book out. So for example, in a guilt fund, which is a longer duration fund, how would you explain that duration risk? See, it depends on which kind of how the fund is positioned. It depends upon the government. As of, as of now, when there is almost a unanimity amongst the investing investment managers, portfolio managers, their interest rates are going to fund up. And all these funds are going to be very, very dynamic. They are being managed dynamically. I don't think at this point of time, any fund manager will be keeping a 10 to 15 year or 20 year kind of duration in that fund. They will be on the shorter side. They will be having one or two year kind of duration. And there will be a loss, probability of loss, a marginal loss, yes, but a big loss is not there in majority of the cases. I'm saying because I don't know how the fund will position 
as of now and what are we going to when, when there is a unanimity and most of the people will be on the shorter side so so yes there is a need to educate people about the concept of how to market policies there is a concept of uh, understanding the national laws and actual laws being worked so so that as where the, the whole uh, education part has to go into and uh, see fund manager managers and the fund houses are actually doing a brilliant job they are reaching out to the people I mean, if I take the example of SBI Mutual Fund, we are doing a lot of seminars. We are reaching out to people, telling them what it means for them. And today, if we have to suggest something, we are always suggesting very, very short duration. We are talking about money market funds, or we are talking about low duration funds, or we are talking about the target maturity funds. Nothing else. But if, if, if there's a uh, once there's a clarity, we will definitely reach out to the people and tell them now oh, this is the time because. Nobody can say that now this is the peak or now this is the bottom. Uh, but but there is always a likelihood uh, that fund as as compared to the equity funds, the visibility of bottom or peak is much more there than than in the equity funds. So so here we still as of now we in S B B S field still there is a room for interest rate getting harder over the period of time over the period of next three to six months. But there will be a good opportunity at that point of time to take a call of the long duration uh, uh, funds. Yeah. Uh, all the long duration funds where people are still there, there the uh, duration of the funds is being played at a very very low level. It used to be 15 years, 17 years. Today it is one to two years. I, I can talk about my fund house, and I am sure about other most of the major fund houses will have a similar kind of strategy as of date. Okay, so then let me ask you this. You said that three to six months is when you see that bond yields will move up substantially. Um, yes. Can I say then uh, that it is very likely that the 10-year bond yield will hit close to 8.25% or over 8% by March of 2023? And yeah. from that perspective, that an Indian investor who is planning their debt fund investments or fixed income investments till March of 2023 should stay at least should stay in low duration and after that they can start looking in target maturity is that is that fair to that's say a, that's, a, that's exactly what it said there's a visibility of at least 8% percent above float 8.25 and uh, people can can I see all these are now uh, market driven things I mean even if today 8% even if today it's 7.6, 7.7%, people can definitely stagger. They can put 10, 15% at this point of time, they stagger off the of time. But yes, my call will be that that will be the time when to take a very big long term call. At this point of time, I will suggest that, that we should be in the shorter duration funds like uh, uh, money market fund or ultra short term kind of funds for three to six months. I am uh, absolutely in saying that. Could you give us a sense then how you see the the yields on the shorter end developing then because that will kind of give people a picture as to when they put money into these shorter duration funds for the next 7 to 8 months what is their return expectation then broadly from those schemes See we always see this is a surplus of money which people have at this so when we are putting the short term where there is no benefit of uh, short of capital gain tax, so naturally it has to be compared with the short term uh, deposit rates, right? So today the deposit rates as far as saving bank interest is concerned, it's, it's generally around 4%, uh, 3.7, 2.7, 4, 4.5, on an average it will be 3.5% is put together on the rates. And if you look at the short term, shorter term uh, FTRs, these are in the ranges of 5, 5.5% kind of thing in the shorter duration. So from that point of view, these funds will definitely give you minimum 50 to 100 basis point more than that because there's always a lag when the interest rates have increased though banks have started increasing the deposit rates but still there will be an alpha of around 50 to 100 basis point on short term funds because there was a period say if I talk about three, three months ago when, when we talk about the shorter duration fund uh, like uh, uh, say liquid funds or money market funds these funds are giving three and a half four percent kind of return and and the bank deposit rates were either equal or higher than these rates. So naturally there was a case to put money in the, in the bank deposits. And as of today, 
but uh, the things have reversed. The interest rates are around 1500%, and we spend lower than the short term yields which are there, which are in the offering in the range of 6, 6.5%. 6.5% kind of money where uh, uh, is uh, their debt of expenses, it could be 6.25% 6. with a very, very small, uh, definitely mark to market risk also. But this makes very, very good sense to park quickly into these kind of funds. And, and uh, see, uh, of course, calculate that if you're putting money for five years, for six months, if you get one, one and a half percent less, and for the remaining five years, you get 50 basis point more, which is more beneficial. That kind of uh, thought process has to be brought in, in the minds of the world investors. And fund houses are there to, to, to play it very, very dynamically. We, we, we can, there are funds, we are educating people, we are educating distributors, we are educating banks to talk about these things. Certainly what we are trying to do as well, Mr. Singh, but I also want, so you have said 8 to 8.25% 8 on the long end and you said as yeah. things stand right now, 50 to 100 basis points at least is the kind of benefit that you can get in a ultra short duration fund in the low duration funds that you get as compared to your bank uh, deposits, right? Uh, yeah. What I want to ask next is while you see this 8 to 8.25 on the, on the 10 year, where do you see the shorter end of the spectrum moving, considering that we could see repo at 6% over the next 6 to, se uh, six to 7 months? Uh, a lot of people have spoken about the flattening of the yield curve in the past, and they've said that the shorter end of the spectrum, you'll see yields going up much faster than the long end of the spectrum. So therefore, yeah. what I'm trying to get at is 6 months down the line, these low duration funds could yield much more than they are even now. That, that is fine, but then there's a help for a very longer period. Yeah. Right? And you have to put in for five years, you have to put in for six months. That is something you have to see. As of that, it's, it's physical, right? That point of time, it may not be. your second question, for why I feel that it could go to 8%. The reason being, it's a, more than the interest rate, there's a demand supply function also which works. At this point of time, at a high end, buyers are not there. There are going to be sellers. Whenever there's a uh, buying, selling, uh, uh, see, mismatch is there, or demand supply mismatch is there. Sometimes we move up. Right? Today, everybody is sitting on the same thing. So, um, and in spite of 50 basis points, uh, the, the, the yields are not moved. But can it continue to be like this for the, over the period of time, even if 50 basis points more there? I don't think so. Even not if uh, the uh, interest rate goes up at 75 basis points, so yields may move up at, at least 30 to 40 basis points. That is the premise on which I am uh, talking about it, and I wish uh, that, that uh, I am correct and I am very happy if it just they don't move up uh, too, too much because that will not get to any capital loss on the existing portfolios. Uh, one last question from my side. We are almost certain to see that interest uh, rates will go up, bond yields will go up. Uh, how long do you see this sustaining? Because a lot is at play, right? We spoke about it at the start. Uh, we're talking about pretty elevated rates in uh, the largest economy in the world that could last to well beyond 2023 or at least till 2023, assuming that there isn't a recession or something like that that would cause them to lower rates again. Do we then yeah. say that this higher interest rate scenario, which we seem to be moving into, will last for a while? Yeah, I, I think so, because see, we have seen these cycles earlier on, so we are in the business and the asset management business for the last 32 years. It's, this is not the first time this is happening, but this time the circumstances are totally different. This is the circumstances, I mean, suppose uh, tomorrow the, this, uh, the whole crisis, shipping crisis, uh, was the, um, goes away and, and the, uh, the uh, fuel prices come down drastically, well, and, and the inflation comes drastically down. Can there be no uh, uh, change in the circumstances? Yes, there will be. So, 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 so then the things will go for petty in a, in a, in the benefit side. So, so, these are the possibilities which may be there. And I don't foresee any, any big move from here on, uh, going on. Let's see, you already talked about the recession. As far as, uh, US is concerned, people are concerned. And Europe definitely, people are very, very much concerned because they don't have any manufacturing, which think everything is, uh, imported. So, so the developed, those uh, developed countries are also looking at the recession and it may not set in. So these are the, some of the uh, risks which we, which we are facing all across the world. 
So India is not common. Um, we cannot be unsurprised from this thing. But although we are, we are having a very, very big benefit of demand, domestic demand itself. That's, that's a big benefit for us. That, that will continue to play around. And uh, I, I want to be more optimistic than, than pessimistic. I don't want to see a doomsday kind of situation very, very soon. So, so but, but I am of the opinion, this is what we are talking about 8% or what we are talking about, uh, about the short-term uh, interest rates. This is something where our ability, where our visibility can go. Beyond that, what will happen, it's, it's not going to anybody. And uh, just to your point of staying optimistic, Mr. Singh, uh, it remains the case that India as a large economy continues to be the fastest growing. And, uh, you know, we hope that that continues to be the case. Pleasure speaking with you, Mr. Singh, and uh, looking Thank forward you. to our next chat already. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. All right. Now, that is an interesting chat. Certainly puts things in perspective, right? If you talk about your fixed income strategy. Now, we have to slip into a very quick break, but on the other side, we'll talk about a few mistakes that people make, that investors make, that could be more damaging than a fall in the equity markets. So do stay tuned.